<clears throat> okay, so like a lot of people, you're going to be transitioning from AutoCAD into Revit. So what I want to do is talk about some of the uh, similarities, the differences. Uh, I'll kind of talk about the major differences first, and then as a way of transitioning into Revit, I'll discuss the ways that it's actually quite similar. So, tell me how it is that you typically work when you are in AutoCAD. What do you do first? You get the project, you know what you're supposed to do, you start working, and what's the one drawing that typically you start creating in AutoCAD? That's pretty common, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you kind of know what the client wants. You begin to kind of uh, go into model space and lay things out, and you're putting in your walls and your partitions, your entrances, your windows, your doors, and that sort of thing. And uh, that's typically where a project starts. Now, when you're working away in AutoCAD, of course, you're just setting up layers based on your own judgment. AutoCAD has no concern for whether you have a doors layer or a windows layer. It doesn't know what that means. You name it. You put whatever you want in it. That's the end of the control from AutoCAD. So you choose your colors, your line weights, um, and your layers, and you begin to draw, drawing these lines that you say represent walls and windows and doors. But AutoCAD never has any sort of knowledge of that. Once you're finished the floor plan, then what do you do? You draw some extension lines, perhaps. Maybe you work on the second floor plan. Maybe you need an elevation, so you start creating that. But the important point there is that those are all separate drawings. So we work kind of independently on each one of those. And as long as you're working on the same project, you can usually keep track of that fairly well. Problems arise, though, when maybe you close that file, you haven't thought about it for a while, your client disappeared, and then a month later they come back and they tell you all these things that you need to change about the file. You've worked on something else since then, so maybe your focus is on another project. You open up their old project because they want to move a window. So what do you do? You go to the floor plan, you delete the window, move it, and what do you forget to do? inevitably change it on the other drawings right so you remove it from the floor plan but you forget that that same window is represented in other parts of the project but because there's no real smart way of keeping track of that other than just your own intuition uh, inevitably you're gonna lose track and something won't get deleted so the drawings go off um, you know there's bids there's development permits all the rest and then lo and behold on the construction site you get more windows than you should have had because somebody forgot to cancel a window on an elevation and now everybody's mad because you paid for more windows than you needed. So that situation is exactly what Revit was designed to fix. In fact, the name, in fact, the name means revise it. It's a shortened form of that phrase. So all those times where you just forget to take something off of one and you leave it on another, it was kind of meant to, to basically fix that situation. So, um, as I said, in AutoCAD we kind of have this type of an approach where we're looking, working on multiple objects. Uh, multiple drawings and there's no knowledge in AutoCAD that any particular line means any particular thing. In addition, in uh, AutoCAD, as I mentioned, we work in layers for that reason because we want to kind of group all these lines in the doors category and all these lines in the windows category and so forth. So when we come over to Revit, uh, we work a little bit differently. Now just kind of follow along with me and just fire up a basic project to start with. Uh, I'm going to have you build some really simple walls just so that you've got some geometry on screen that you can play with. On this initial home screen, what I want you to do is just click on New under Projects. And once you've clicked that button, you'll see a new project window pop up and it wants to know which template you want to use. Just for the sake of the demo, I'm going to choose Default US Canada. Now you might be seeing a few different ones there. If there's one that says architecture, you can use that. It's typically loaded in right from the start. Anybody not seeing the architecture template? Okay, good. That one will work fine. It's actually the same pretty much as this default US Canada. So we'll just specify that and click OK. And you'll be greeted with one of the other major differences between the two programs, which is that in AutoCAD we tend to work in a black background. In Revit we work in a white background. We can certainly customize that, but just for the sake of kind of... Uh, Synchronicity, I guess. I'm just going to leave it as a white background. That's typically how you see work being done in Revit. So in this view, we're looking at a floor plan. I can tell that because over here on the right, I have a project browser. It might, in your case, be located on the left underneath the properties window. 
So just for the sake of kind of carrying on with this comparison, I'll come back and show you how to kind of customize that. But just for the sake of this initial comparison between the two programs, what I want you to do is I want you to click over here on the left. Uh, you can see a tab that says uh, architecture. That's probably where it is by default, but just make sure you're on the architecture tab and right below that there's a wall button. Click on the top part of that wall button just to access its default state. And all we're going to do here real quick is we're just going to draw four sets of lines which represent four walls. Don't worry about the dimensions or anything else. It doesn't even have to be completely resolved or finished. Just put some, uh, some geometry there in the file. We just want to create those four basic walls. We'll come back and kind of describe what all the particulars are about uh, what we just did there. But once you've done that, then I want you to go up here in the top left to this little house icon. And this is our default 3D view. So if you click on that, you will then see, as you might expect, to see a 3D representation of what you drew uh, when you were working away in the floor plan view. So initially it looked like it did in AutoCAD. We were drawing just an orthogonal view. It looked like we were just making two-dimensional elements, but in fact we're actually making these extruded walls. Now, that's one of the major differences between the two programs. As I said, in AutoCAD, we just sort of lay down some line work. AutoCAD doesn't really have any knowledge of what those objects are. Uh, but in Revit, we make, we make a model. So we're building three-dimensional objects, and those three-dimensional objects are being used by Revit to generate drawings. So just like we saw in that initial view, if I double-click in the browser on level one, there's my floor plan view of that three-dimensional geometry. Similarly, down in the browser, I also have a section for elevations. So if I double-click, let's say, on the south elevation view, then I get the elevation view. So that's the basic premise of how Revit works. I'm making a 3D model, and Revit has tools to allow me to see that model from the traditional architectural vantage points, plans, sections, elevations, and details. So some of the thing, those are some of the things that are kind of the substantial differences. Um, I'll talk briefly here about some of the things that are similar. Um, Revit originally was developed by another corporation, and when Autodesk saw the potential, they acquired it. Um, say what you will about monopolies, maybe that's not so great, but one of the good things is that there's some nice unity between the two programs now. So Autodesk owning AutoCAD, um, developed an interface that's kind of common between the two programs. And in fact, it's a common interplace, uh, interface between a lot of other programs as well. Um, primarily, you'll see along the top what they call the ribbon. So um, on the ribbon, now if you click on the tabs first, you'll see that they open up, as you would expect, a whole bunch of different other sets of tools. And that's actually very similar to what you would see, of course, in AutoCAD. So the ribbon with the tabs and all the tools and panels within that. So that's another example of how things are similar. Um, some other little things that are similar between the two programs, the keyboard shortcuts work uh, in much the same way with one important distinction. Um, some of the keyboard shortcuts are actually even the same. Trim, for example, uh, has the same keyboard shortcut. So easy to remember, TR and AutoCAD, TR and Revit happens to be the initials of your instructor as well. So you'll never forget that one. Um, one important difference between AutoCAD and Revit as far as the keyboard shortcuts go, and this is a bit of a limiting factor in Revit, unfortunately, is in AutoCAD you can have a keyboard shortcut, let's say for, um, let's say you had a three-letter keyboard shortcut, T-R-D. Uh, unfortunately, what happens in Revit is that there's no enter command when you're doing keyboard shortcuts, so you couldn't have a T-R-D keyboard shortcut and a T-R keyboard shortcut, because as soon as you type in the letters T and R, it will automatically initiate the command that's associated with whatever command has that TR. So you'll never get to the TRD or whatever other letter you specify. So um, in AutoCAD, you enter the keyboard, you hit, or sorry, you enter the, the two letters or digits, and then you hit enter. In Revit, it just automatically goes right into the command. So somewhat limited. Uh, the one last sort of major thing, actually, no, there's two more things I'll point out. Um, that make it easy to work between the two programs. Um, another kind of example of common ground that the two uh, programs share is that because AutoCAD is meant to generate drawings, it's a drafting program, 
you have this kind of uh, split world, right? You've got the model space and the paper space. So you draw things kind of one-to-one -one scale in model space, and then when it comes time to represent them at a certain scale, you switch over to paper space. Uh, Revit has a similar type of convention. It's not, um, it doesn't use those exact words, but for the most part, what you're doing in Revit is you're modeling. You're working away in one-to-one -one units. If your building is gonna be 10 meters long, you're generating units that are 10 meters long and when it comes time to print them, what you do is you pay attention to the scale factor here in the view control bar. And that is the scale that this object is going to print at. You then go to the view tab and create a new sheet. And I'm just going to quickly uh, go with the default title block here. If you're not able to follow along with this, um, that's okay. Um, I'm just going to kind of give you the demonstration of how conceptually it works. So I'll choose just one of these sample title blocks and there's my sheet and all I do now is just basically drag the views from the browser onto the sheet and it'll just lag for a bit and catch up. There we go. So that represents my floor plan view which was at 1 to 100 on my sheet at the proper scale. Now obviously that's not a finished work. I've got lots of things I need to do to kind of crop that properly and add some notes and all the rest. We'll get into that. But just know that they have the kind of similar approach that you create something in a one-to-one -one type of environment and then when it comes time to print and represent at scale, you've got another environment where you uh, generate those documents. Last thing I'm going to point out here before I start talking uh, in a little bit more detail about the interface is just how well the two programs work together. And uh, don't worry about keeping up with this one. It's just going to be kind of a visual uh, demonstration on screen. So what I wanted to point out um, is that you can actually create geometry in Revit and export it in an AutoCAD format, and it speaks very well. Uh, in fact, it does a lot of nice grouping things uh, in AutoCAD that make it ready, or sorry, in Revit, that it makes it, makes it ready to work uh, with quite nicely uh, in Revit. So what I have here, uh, as I said, just kind of watch this. Uh, don't worry about following along. I'm just going to find a pre-made little structural drawing here. Uh, if you're generating a drawing in AutoCAD and it's of something that's fairly complex, it's quite possible that that object has already been created in Revit. For example, I have this open web steel joist with some columns and beams. And uh, that would be a lot of work to figure that out, draw it manually, all the offsets and trims and clips and everything else, the distribution of each of those uh, web elements. Um, that'd be a fair bit of work. Sometimes I can just create something in Revit using existing objects in the library and export them as a DWG file, which is just simply a matter of going to File and Export and then choosing the D DWG format. And... Uh, just like a cooking show here, I'm going to jump to the finished product. Uh, and that's the exported DWG. And as I said, not only do you get the line work, but it does a nice job of grouping things that were originally part of the same entity back in Revit. So that would take a long time to do that in AutoCAD, but there's a lot of ways where Revit just allows you to kind of shortcut. Now, I don't know what sort of shortcuts your 360 instructor will allow. Maybe we better keep that one secret when it comes time to draw a joist, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, if only I knew that long ago, right? But just wanted to point out how well the two programs work together. That's the benefit of having Autodesk kind of look after both, is that when you need to use one or the other, um, they play very nicely together. <laughs>